messes seemed to follow me and I couldn't figure out why they kept coming back even after I decluttered until I finally had my aha moment and I know why now. When you first walk into my door, the usual clutter hotspot on the floor has returned. They say all flat surfaces are a potential for clutter. That includes my floor because I have hoarding disorder. And I noticed that it came back. And that, why does the messes always come back after I declutter it? What am I missing? Because I'm motivated to declutter but I'm missing a component in the main taining. And yes, I do have Hot Mess House playing with Miss Cass from Clutterbug to give a little inspiration along the way. But let's refocus. And that is, why are messes so attracted to me? <laughs> why do the messes come back slowly but surely? And where do I need to change in my heart? What areas do I need to heal in or change to recognize how to fix this problem? Why does it always come back? Even this table over here that we just decluttered two weeks ago in a YouTube shorts, the clutter is already starting to return. Now, these are my boy's daily chore charts when I'm away at work, so that way I can try and establish habits for them for cleaning, but what about me? <laughs> Why does it feel like everyone else can keep their house neat and tidy? My friends, my, my parents. Why can everyone else keep their house so tidy with ease and I struggle? What's going on mentally and subconsciously that I struggle with it and yet millions of people do not? And then I realized the common denominator for everyone that I knew who was neat and tidy. And that is the clutter drives them nuts. <laughs> it makes them anxious to see all of the clutter. I remember my friend saying she couldn't fall asleep at night knowing her kitchen had dirty dishes and was a mess. And my mom was kind of similar where I could see that she couldn't really wind down for the evening if there were things that were not put back into their proper place. And for me, I've always had the opposite since I was a child. I coded myself that the stuff was comforting in my house. The stuff made me feel safe. It was self-expression. It was a way to imagine. It never judged me. And because I still have some of that coding in my subconscious, the clutter doesn't bother me. I can very easily relax and unwind at night looking at that clutter on the side. It doesn't bother me enough to make sure that, oh, nope, nope, I need to make sure that I am putting this away. I need to make sure that we're cleaning this up before I can enjoy the rest of my evening after a very long day. When I come home from work, I wanna jump right into family time, making dinner, being with the boys, being with my husband. Speaking of which, look, he got me these flowers for my 20th um, subscriber celebration. And honestly, cleaning and decluttering kinda takes a back seat to that because my anxiety is losing family time. So that's why when I come home, that's my focus. What am I going to do with the boys? What sporting event do they have tonight? Because everything's opening back up and even though baseball season ended, swim team has started. And I wanna be there supporting them, cheering them on, being a mommy who drops them off and picks them up and cheers them on. And I'm also passionate about creating videos each and every week, trying to strengthen my decluttering muscles. And I always joke with hubby with, oh yeah, that area will get cleaned up because I'm doing a video on it. And when you record a video on it, it takes twice the amount of time to clean it up because you have to change your camera angles. You have to look back to make sure you got the shot and it just takes twice as long to complete the task. And let's not forget that after you've recorded the video, it'll take you an additional 
five, six hours to edit it. Yes, that's about as long as it takes. And in the future, very soon, I am going to start hiring an editor out so I can focus on different things like the creative part and new videos and new concepts. But you can see where time really starts to get pulled away in another direction instead of daily upkeep. And speaking of time, with my ADHD, I am not the best with time management, and that is another area where I can improve. So moving forward, I'm also going to bring back Fly Lady's system with her two minute hotspots, because I feel that's going to be a great addition to make sure that the spaces are being maintained without overwhelming me. And another area is defining more homes for stuff. That way, me, the boys, my husband, know where to put stuff back at. Now this stuff right here is all the fun summer stuff, right? This is all the fun outside summer things, but it's sitting here is not a good home for it. The boys will go outside to play, right? They'll get their scooters, whatever's kind of outside for them, they will play with. So the outside stuff being in the living room is not working. So an idea to adjust this is I have the bin in the basement, right? I have a bin from cleaning out stuff. So what I'll do is I'll put the outside toys in here and maybe I'll stick this bin in the front yard. If you have any suggestions for me, please let me know in the comment section below what is the best way to organize the outside toys? Because for now, sure, I'll leave the bin out here and see how it works just to see if they actually are pulling toys out of here to play with it. Maybe it is best suited in the garage. But yeah, I would love to hear what everybody suggests. Another thing that I recognize is that I wear out real quick with decision-making fatigue with stuff especially after a long day because this bin has a lot of things that were not put back in its home. And because I felt tired, I just left it in the bin to complete another day. And that is where you really see the ADHD because I will start a lot of things, but I won't complete it, right? Like putting all of this miscellaneous things away. I would come home, I would drop it on the floor and I'd go to the next 10 things that my mind thinks that it has to do. And I'm always like, I'll get it later. I'll get it later. Later never came. Later never came because I was constantly chasing my next 10 thoughts. And if it didn't include putting it away, it wasn't going to happen. So now that we identified some of the issues that create the messes to come back so easily, we can start to make strategies on a daily level to prevent it. Now, as far as the clutter making me feel safe, abundant, prosperous, I have been on a soulful level, praying, meditating, journaling, trying to detach my heart from it. And that will also be very helpful. On the flip side, I don't want the clutter to create stress in me like my friends. I rather find peace and harmony in the organization of the stuff, which lessens my anxiety. I feel like that might be a more positive motivation for it. Like this stuff right here, this stuff that I'm showing you actually does get on my nerves. It is my stuff that I use for Hoarder's Heart, my microphone, my cords, my date book, my laptop. I would love to have a space where it's organized. And until I have an office space, I would really like to create a home for it. Next, I'm going to be taking a time management class because there is a lot of wonderful new opportunities opening up for me and Hoarder's Heart, but it takes time. And I need to learn how to schedule out my day so that I can have schedules for myself and also create them for my boys so that they can get into the habit of cleaning up and helping keeping the house neat too. Next, I also think that we should incorporate the Fly Lady system back into our lives again as a family because that'll help immensely if everyone's doing two minute and five minute hot spots. And something else I just realized as I said that, when I said about schedules, my subconscious coding said, oh, womp womp, that's not fun. 
Very childlike, I know, but it was the way I kind of wired myself because my sons made this bucket list and there's some school stuff that we want to do. And I think that cleaning and decluttering this every day takes away that time from with my boys. And that's not true. That's a mindset that I have to work on. It's probably going to be the opposite where if I have these strategies in place, it'll actually open up more time because I'm not going to be spending hours decluttering and cleaning up areas in one time. And now let me show you another tossy, tossy pile. And it would have been a little bigger, but I actually already threw a lot of stuff out because I was trying to be like, okay, complete what you started. <laughs> and I forgot to record it, but that's okay. We have a lot of stuff here. We have a lot of jolts. And if you don't know what jolt means, it stands for just one little thing. So each and every day, we can either let go of one thing or like today, we're letting go of about 30 plus things. So we had 30 jolts. What it's doing is developing your decluttering muscles and creating a daily decluttering habit. And now when you walk through the front door, it is neat and tidy and manageable. And I always tell myself, doesn't this look tranquil? Doesn't this look peaceful? And I do feel it, but I am trying to rewire old coding. I grew up with this hoarder mentality because when I saw clean rooms like this, I saw lack and scarcity and poverty and not a place for creativity. And I'm trying to decode these subconscious thoughts that I've wired in my mind my entire life, which created the hoard. I'm not in lack. I'm not in poverty. This is peaceful. This is tranquil. This can be abundant because I know where everything is. And abundance doesn't have to be wrapped in stuff. I don't know why I wrapped abundance in just stuff. Just simple walks and being able to take my boys places and experiences and being able to enjoy a family meal that's abundance, right? Thanking God for the abundance of time with my family, my friends, and the beauty that this earth has to offer. And that's what I've been doing on a soulful level, rewiring this old coding. And I hope that this encourages other hoarders to start rewiring that coding too, so that we can be set free from the hoard, right? We are not the stuff. It feels like it, but we're not the stuff. A clean home does not mean scarcity. And I just want to bring these ideas front. That way people can really understand the mentality of hoarding so that we can think of ways to heal and change and enjoy the open spaces.